Alright, now we have moved on to one of our favorite games ever, A Link to the Past. We want to start it off with something we haven't done before, and that's dungeon ranking. We felt it would be easier to start out this one off with A Link to the Past, um, since we have a lot of history with these dungeons, and we felt that they were more unique compared to each other than the dungeons were in 1 and 2. We're the only to try for us, and let's start us off. This cave-like dungeon wasn't really something we played through with joy. It's got a really boring design, and these platforms can be really annoying. Especially that dark room with the button in the middle. Damn, how many times I've died there. The only cool thing I could say about Turtle Rock is in fact the Turtle Rock. It looks cool, but the dungeon was not that fun. Yes, the Slippery Ice Palace. This place is freaking huge and very annoying, especially to some people, because of the icy floors. Even getting down the stairs is hard and annoying. This place also has freaking penguins sliding at you. Freaking ice men coming out of the walls. That's actually kinda cool. Probably the most annoying thing about this whole dungeon is that getting the block down to the button puzzle thingy. Man, has that ever confused us. I don't know what to say about this one. It's both cool and uncool. We don't like the four big rooms in the beginning, but the rest is actually pretty fun. What we like most about this dungeon is the boss thing, but we'll talk about that some other time. Oh well, this dungeon is... good. The first dungeon where you get a pendant. It's pretty great too. It has these cannonballs, style foes, you get the bow, and it's got those freaky cyclops that made me piss my pants when I was younger. I was always too scared to wake them up and let them chase me. I used to shoot like four to five arrows just to make sure they would die. Well, enough about them. Anyway, this dungeon was very good. There's something really strange about Misery Mire. And I can't really explain what. It's got all of these whiz robes, moving walls, dark rooms and these portal thingies. Not to mention it's got a whole lot of rooms, and we always strive to figure out where we should go first. It's kinda confusing, but not in a frustrating way. I guess that's all I can say about it. The Swamp Palace is a water dungeon. It is surprisingly high on the list, isn't it? Well, one of the issues we have with water dungeons and levels in other games are that we often have to swim underwater. That's not the case in this game. Sure, it has some rooms you have to fill up with water. Heck, that's even what you have to begin with. But there's not three different levels of it like in the Water Temple of Ocarina of Time. This dungeon is just fun with some tricky ways to enter rooms, like with this door behind the waterfall. This huge tower can be tough, but also fun. There are holes on the floor you can play with, tiles come flying at you, even more holes you can play with. It's just that I've always liked the design of this dungeon. The rooms look really cool, some are really big with chests placed in the middle and everything. Generally, it's a fine dungeon. There's just something really awesome about dungeons in the desert, but this one ranks pretty high because it consists of two parts. The first one is really cool, many rooms, many cool enemies, and it's pretty tough. Some enemies are generally tough, but there's also that one room you get locked into and won't let you out until you kill the enemies inside it. Any rewards when they're done? Nope. But you probably remember that the next time you're there. This part also has three exits. One is where you came in, one that leads nowhere, and one that leads to the second part. This time it's inside a mountain, and this is where the boss hides. I heard many people talking about how much they hate this dungeon. 
but we ranked it this high because of how unique it is. It doesn't really have a main entrance. Well, maybe it does. You can pretty much drop yourself down a hole in the woods and you'll find yourself inside. This means you can actually skip a lot of it. And how often are you given that opportunity? But you do need the item from the dungeon to proceed to the boss that's somewhere deeper into the forest. Pretty much like the previous dungeon on this list. Ah, oh, that music. We rank Carlo Castle as the two-parter. The first in which you rescue Zelda at the very beginning, the second where you encounter Aghanim after getting the Master Sword. The first one is pretty exciting. You receive the sword and shield from your uncle, and you're off to explore the dungeons in this castle to find a princess who telepathically requested for your rescue. You get a map and a weapon in this dungeon, and encounter sort of a mini boss. That actually can't take more than two pot hits. Anyway, you lead the princess out into a safe place through watery sewers filled with snakes and everything. The second is really straightforward. You proceed through many rooms and floors as you fight off many of Hyrule's tough soldiers. Even if there are no real puzzles, except maybe this maze, it is pretty fun. Meet some soldiers you want to see outside of this place, and we enjoy fighting every enemy in Hyrule Castle. The first dungeon in the Dark World. This dungeon has so many exciting rooms, so many ways to go, so many cool enemies, and is generally a great dungeon. Confusing at some points, with portals, dark rooms, many doors to choose between and everything. Oh, this one has moving walls too! It's just an awesome dungeon to start off with in the dark world. This dungeon is probably the darkest in the whole game. And should be if you look at its name. Oh, by the way, got 100 rupees? You gotta pay the monkey to enter. We are going to include the final dungeons on every ranking too, and often it has great chance to top our lists. But to assure you, the final dungeon does not top our lists on every game. Now, the reason why this one is number one is because of how huge it is, and at times it is pretty challenging. And it makes you face the first three bosses again. Since you've gotten stronger, Ganon tried to make it harder for you. Slippery floors, fireballs, and an even smaller floor for you to face up with the Moldor. Oh joy! To us, this is just the way to end the game off. <laughs>